families, creating a lifetime of memories. Sadly, some families are denied these important moments due to the sad practice of alienation. These are Families Divided. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Families Divided TV. Tonight, Sally Harris is going to be with us, and in her insightful presentation, she's going to explore the profound emotional journey of parents nav navigating estrangement or alienation from their adult children. She's going to be focusing on self-discovery and personal growth, and she will delve into the complexities of identity beyond parenthood, providing practical steps and thought-provoking questions to guide parents on a path of rediscovery. From rekindling long-lost passions to celebrating individuality, each slide that Sally offers tonight has a nuanced perspective aimed at empowering parents to embrace their multifaceted identities. The presentation encourages self-reflection, outlines tangible strategies for building a supportive community, and underscores the importance of celebrating personal progress. By the end of this presentation, you're going to be inspired to recognize your intrinsic value beyond the roles of parenthood and find renewed purpose and joy in your unique life journey. This is gonna be an episode many of us need. So you may again wanna take notes. We're gonna be back with Sally Harris right after these messages. Divorce and co-parenting are a major life interruption for families, especially the kids, but also for parents and grandparents. And it's even worse in blame-filled, high-conflict cases. When parents engage in alienation by turning the kids against the other parent or grandparents, kids suffer. They're denied the opportunity to build the four big skills necessary for future resilience. New Ways for Families online class can help. Parents learn to use our popular Biff and Ear skills to calm the conflict and stop the hostile emails and texts. And we even have a class for kids and parents to learn together. Research shows a 75% improvement in joint parental decision making after this course is taken, plus overall improvements for kids' well-being. Don't wait to make this affordable investment in your children's future and improve your well-being too. Start learning new ways for your family today at conflictplaybook.com. Welcome to all of you, and thank you so much, Elaine, for having me back. Greatly appreciate it, and I just love your mission. Today, I want to talk to you all about self-identity because you are more than a parent. And so for this goes for moms and dads, obviously, today, in regards to self-identity, it is just so crucial that we dive into that because it's an aspect that so many parents, including myself, kind of forgot about during, during the time where you're estranged or alienated. And whether you still are or you're not, this is a topic that I believe every parent should hear. So I want you to think about why this is so important. Well, I believe because I know firsthand, you know, what it means to lose your identity as a person. And I know that when I not only lost my daughter in my life, I lost myself. And now that I'm on the other side of that, of the estrangement, I can see clearly all the things that, you know, I handled well and the many things that I did not. And this is definitely one of them. And also, I've seen so many of my clients do the same. And self-identity has actually been an integral part of my process when I coach because it's a vital piece for us to move forward as an individual. So today I want to give you some practical steps and a few thought-provoking questions on this subject to help you walk through this process for yourself in your own life. All right, so who am I? Well, I want to ask you a question. Have you looked in the mirror lately and asked yourself, that very question. Have you ever looked in the mirror and said, who am I? Because when you're in the middle of this journey, this situation with your adult children, we definitely tend to lose who we are and who we were made to be. And in order to figure out who you are, 
we need to set aside some dedicated time for self-reflection each week. I think that is so such a crucial step because it's really just sitting. You can do this in your quiet time in the morning or in the evening or whenever you whenever you sit down to actually have your quiet time each day. And if you're not doing that, I would encourage that as well. But keeping a journal to record your feelings, your thoughts, your insights that you have for the day is crucial because we forget things so easily, right? So when you can look back at things like that and you'll be able to see your progress and your growth and you're going to be able to see how you got yourself out of certain situations, certain feelings, um, and really just being able to self-reflect. So for those of you that are interested in gaining deeper insights into your identity in Christ, which I believe is a crucial, crucial step, um, whether you're a believer or not, I think these are a very good step um, in understanding who we are. And I'm just going to, I have a few scripture here I just want to share with you. And I would encourage you to jot these down because they're crucial in remembering for on those days where you're really struggling and you need to have that reminder. These are just, it's just full of life and hope. And so in Romans 15, it talks about how you are accepted, right? You're accepted. In John 15, it talks about you are chosen, right? You are chosen. And I want you to say, I want you to know that you can say I. So you say, I am accepted. I am chosen. In Galatians, he says, you are free. In 2 Corinthians, he talks about how you are a new person. So I am a new person in Christ, right? The old is gone, the new has come. In John 1, he talks about you are a child of God. And then Genesis 1 talks about how you are made in God's image because you matter too in this whole situation with your son or daughter, with your family situation. You matter too. We, we tend to lose ourselves so much and set ourselves on the back burner. And we're going to dive into all of that. So I want you to know that we tend, because we tend to take on what the world says about us, what social media says about us what our kids say about us you know these are these are the reasons why we have to remember we're in, we're made in God's image right so i encourage you to jot, have i hope you jot, jotted those down and can move forward <clears throat> and ask tell yourself these things every single day until they get into your spirit so some questions that you could ask yourself here is what roles do i currently play in my life and how do they define me so you're a parent, or you obviously would not likely be watching this. You're a husband or a wife. You might be a sister, a brother, a friend, right? A worker. What roles, these are the roles that you play, but how do they define you? So I want you to think about that and maybe jot that down because you need to know how these roles define you. As a parent, we've let it define us in so many ways. From the moment we find out we're, we're pregnant or we adopt, we like it has already defined us. And in some ways, obviously, that is very normal. But most of us tend to take that to an extreme. Another question you could ask yourself related to who you are is what strengths and weaknesses do I notice in myself? And how do they contribute to my identity? Right. So what are your strengths and weaknesses that you notice in you? And are you allowing others to say what others say? You know, do you, are you allowing that to define you or are you listening to what God says who you are? So we have to get to that point where we choose. And also reminding yourself that um, to, to remind yourself that there's ways uh, with your faith in, in letting Christ shape and redefine your sense of self, because your thought life will change when you do that. You know, we always say how you're, you get to choose who you're going to listen to and you can listen to the naysayers. And sometimes that naysayer is ourself, or you can listen to, to what God says, says about you and who you are. All right. The role of parenthood. So I want you to put your thinking cap on here as you obviously became a parent several years ago, like me. And I want you to reflect on some personal changes that you had. So take a moment to reflect on how your identity as a person has evolved since becoming a parent. That's several years, right? For many years, we're we're diving in deep because we're nurturing these children, right? These infants, these toddlers, and keeping them safe and educating them and feeding them and all these things. So 
So for some aspects of a few years of their life, it's very normal to be all encompassed into our kids, right? But how how has your identity and your priorities evolved? Have they evolved? Or are you still at that place where because of the estrangement or the alienation, you are struggling to the point where you don't even know who you are anymore? Because I know that's a lot of you. And that was me. So I want you to also ask yourself, what aspects of your life and interests have taken that back seat? So like I said, being a parent, very normal, all time consuming for a period of time. But there comes a time when we could have or likely should have, maybe even just a little bit. I know some of you are single parents. I know I was for about six years. And so I didn't have a lot of options besides my parents or my sisters, like helping me with, with watching my girls. So I didn't have a whole lot of time for my own interests because I had responsibilities, right? But now we're talking about our adult children. So if you are someone and all these interests have taken a back seat, I want you to think about how we're going to get those in the front seat. And we're going to talk about this because there's balance. So we need to establish some boundaries around our own responsibilities in life to create time now for personal interests. And that may be your grandkids, for those of you that are able to see your grandchildren, or maybe it could be your work or other interests that you have. But we need to protect that time for personal interests. And I encourage you to communicate openly with your support system. So whether you're married um, or friends or whatnot, but you need to be able to communicate openly with them and letting them know the importance of maintaining this pursuit, right? You, This is really is a pursuit. This is not something that anyone can do for you, which is always quite interesting when I work with people because they have forgotten so much of, about themselves that they just think it's not even applicable anymore, right? But it really is. And so a question you could ask yourself is, again, how have I changed since becoming a parent? You know, we have to consider our priorities in life. We have to consider our interests. We have daily routines and all of those shifted being a parent, right? Some of you are still stuck in that same routine that you had when your kids were little because you haven't known how to get out of it or even had any interest or maybe thought it was okay to move on, to move forward and start putting yourself first as well. So I encourage you to reflect on whether or not these changes have contributed to detracting from your overall well-being. And we're going to dive into that. But it's very common for us moms, especially moms and dads too, but I work solely with moms. So that's my experience. And I have gone through this personally. But a lot of the things that I did it detracted from my overall being. It certainly did not contribute. I chose all the wrong things on how to numb my pain and how to get through this process, right? So it really was taking me in the negative and putting me into this pit, as I always call it, because that's really where I felt. Now, had I taken some of this opportunity and created change that would contribute to my overall well being, not saying it's always easy, but it can be done. And once I started doing that, everything shifted. So let's dive into rediscovering your passions and interests. You may think, I don't have any passions anymore. And I totally understand where you're coming from because I felt the same way. But this too is a transformational step. And it takes a lot of introspection and time. Again, something that nobody can do for you. We can throw out ideas and this and that, but you're the one that's going to have to make the time and really think about what is what is really in your heart of things that you like to do because you're going to get out of it what you put in. So what I encourage people to do is to schedule some dedicated time each week for exploring these interests. And then once you've explored them, obviously time to do them, right? Even if it's just a little bit, maybe you're super busy, you're busy working, you're busy doing other things. You have to make time for yourself or everything else falls by the wayside. You're not going to be your best be the best employee. You're not going to be the best spouse or friend when you're burned out, right? And certainly not a mom. So I would encourage you to identify one past passion 
that was something you were super passionate about years ago, or maybe just five years ago, or maybe just last year, and set a specific goal to reintegrate that into your life. I actually worked with a mom who used to be a dancer as a child, and we were going through this type of exercise, and she came back to her mind. She's like, you know, I used to love to dance. And I said, well, then why don't you take a dance class? And it, she, at first she was like, well, oh my gosh, like I'm too old for that. I'm like, no, you're not. You're never too old for that. So sure enough, she did. And it has become a huge part of her life again. And she's finding joy because she's doing something that she loves. So I encourage you to also figure out what that one thing is. And when you do figure that, figure that out, you may say, I don't have anyone to do that with me. My friends, people I hang out with now are not interested in that. Well, then you find a community of people who are supportive and who share that similar interest, right? Whether it's taking a class to learn something new or it's joining like that dance class where all those people have that same interest. You may not know them, but they're quickly going to become some of your friends, right? So I want you to think about what activities brought you fulfillment. And, you know, before the challenge of estrangement, what brought you fulfillment? You know, for me, I used to work out a lot. I used to have an event on the calendar because it kept me in training mode, right? So that was years back. And then I fell into addiction. I fell into uh, unhealthy eating patterns. I had gained a lot of weight. And so none of that was even on the docket. Like that was not even something I was even remotely considering. But had I considered that versus what I did, my life would have been completely different. So now, uh, several years later, obviously, um, I, we, my husband and I actually trained for the rim to rim to the Grand Canyon, trained for five months and it was fantastic. I actually ended up having an injury right before, so I couldn't hike, unfortunately, this past October, but he did it with our group. And it was a beautiful time and we are going to go next year. But I knew right away, I said to him, and I'm saying to you that when you have that goal on the calendar, whatever it is, when it's approaching quickly, you need to get the next one on the calendar. Because when we accomplish a goal that we have as a, as a, just as an individual, it's so rewarding, but that, that high, that reward kind of wears off pretty quickly. And then you almost feel like a failure because you're not out there doing the training for something and it doesn't have to be physical all the time right but i'm just saying that as, a, as an example that's something that was super passionate for me and it's just been really rewarding getting back at that so identify those interests that you enjoyed even before coming becoming a parent right maybe some of those things were set aside in your life so let's dive into this so here um, you can see all of these um different pictures and I'm just going to read a few of these to you, some things, some ideas that you could think of. But, you know, self-care is really not even, um, <laughs> it really is mandatory. It's not really an option in my book because without it, life is so much more difficult. It really is. But things like art and creativity, gardening, cooking, joining a book club, those are just some, some basic ideas. If you're wondering, like this thought cloud, like, I don't know, I don't remember, I don't have any passions, it's been so long. So I would love all of you listening, like I said, to just find one thing during this video that you can start doing. Whether it's something from the past, something brand new, it doesn't matter. Just find one thing and commit to trying it in the next month. And then set achievable goals for each activity to track your progress because you're going to feel fulfilled knowing that you you're going to have more confidence you're going to feel better about yourself and you're going to feel productive so i like to do what's called an activity journal to document the experiences kind of like a lot of people journal this is you could call it an activity journal or whatever but it's really it documents your experiences and your reflections so it's fun to go back and look at those later on right um i know a lot of you probably are um, into journaling a lot. Um, I enjoy, um, outside of this, I enjoy journal dumping where it's like a brain dump where I just, versus journaling every single day. Um, I journal gratitude, which I think is a great recommendation for all of us. We all need to remember the things that we're grateful for. But I also um, do enjoy the brain dump once in a while just to get everything out 
of your mind and be able to just move on, right? So this next one here, as you can see, here's a couple more options. Um, some thoughts here is maybe learning a musical instrument. Maybe it's picking up an instrument that you um, played a long time ago, or maybe it's a brand new one. Um, fitness and exercise, volunteering, and I have a story for you about that. Travel, right? So most of you, many of you are maybe at that stage of life where you can you can start traveling and actually see the places that you've always wanted to see. Um, and then educational pursuits. That is a big one too. I have a lot of moms that I serve that are getting their, their bachelor's or, or their master's degree. Why? Because they've just something they've always wanted to do. And if they're able, and that's something that, that they're passionate about, it's fantastic. Um, you know, one thought provoking question here would be, which activity from these two thought clouds I shared with you, which one resonates with you most? Is there, is there one that, that resonates with you most? And then, you know, and then think about what goal you could set to, to get that into your routine. Maybe you could, that could be your one that you choose. Um, but then ask yourself, how do you anticipate these activities or this activity contributing to your sense of growth, right? Because it will grow you. It will grow you. It's going to help your mind. It's going to help your body. It's going to help just your overall well-being. So I have a story for you on volunteering, and this is something I share a lot as well, because I think it's so important and crucial. And I had not really volunteered tons prior to this. Okay. So it's not like something I had done my whole life, but when I was going through the situation with my daughter, I, she, she didn't want anything to do with the family. She was off on her own journey and, you know, fast forward, I realized that, you know, her journey was her journey. It was less about me and more about her. And that's very likely the same with, with all of you, most of you. So what I started to do is I realized I had so much love to give. I was a mom of three girls and I missed my daughter immensely, immensely. And nobody could have ever taken her place. But what I started doing is I started volunteering with an organization that um, works with sex trafficking survivors. That was my daughter's part of her story. And long story short, I started, I got involved with this organization and I started volunteering and I started mentoring. So I had the first girl that I mentored probably about eight years ago is when I first met her. And I too was newly um, recovered from alcohol addiction. And I celebrate my eight years. Um, I celebrated in January um, of 2024. And, and Angelia is her name. And we go, we get to, when we volunteer, we go in to change their life. Like that's the goal. We want to like help out. We want to pour into somebody. I want to, you know, mother someone because I just, I had so much love to give and my daughter was rejecting me. And so this girl needed that. That is specifically, she had a really bad situation with her mom. And so she was looking for advice around that. She was looking for someone obviously to mentor her. And so we ended up and still are very close. I consider her part of my family. Um, we just had dinner not too long ago. And the thing about volunteering is, like I said, we go in to change their life. And I promise you, they'll change yours. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And, you know, I never for one minute do I regret doing that. Did it take time? Yes. Was I busy? Yes. But I got rewarded as much as she did. It was definitely a mutual thing. So I encourage you to find that passion that maybe it's maybe it's pets, maybe it's kids, maybe it's, you know, sex trafficking organizations or, you know, domestic abuse, whatever the case may be, take your own pain that you've had in your life or your family and you can give back. You can give back to that. So volunteering, I highly recommend. The next one here is around joyful moments. How many of you feel or felt guilty for having any joyful moments while you are going through this alienation or estrangement? I know I did. I had horrible guilt around any joy. And worse yet is I had a hard time with my husband experiencing any joy. Because in my mind, I thought that we should all be miserable. Because the, when this first happened with my daughter and she had left home and 
I was nearly bedridden. I was depressed. I couldn't get out of bed. And I distinctly remember one one day my husband was in the living room, was watching something on TV that apparently was funny and started laughing. And I was in such a bad spot, like some of you might be able to relate, that I was angry that he found joy. He found laughter in something. And how crazy does that sound now? Because the thing is, you and your spouse, if you're married, you and your husband or you and your wife are going or you're walking the same path, but you're on separate paths. And I quickly learned that and I shifted that. But I'm just being really vulnerable with you right now and just being open and honest about how the things that I felt and that just just so you know, it's not abnormal, I'm not saying it's right. And I, I knew that I had to change that. You know, in Proverbs, it talks about a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones, right? We need joy. We need to have joy in the midst of the hard times. So how do you find joy? Start a gratitude journal. Start a gratitude practice, whether you write it down or you say it or speak it, because we need to capture those moments of joy because you will find what you're looking for. If you're looking for the negative or you're looking for the positive, I promise you, you will find it right? So practicing mindfulness by savoring those joy, joyful moments, but without guilt, right? Without guilt. We need to not worry so much about the future and be present. And so when I say mindfulness, I just mean be present where you're at. We need to stop worrying so much about the future because we can't control it. And all it does is cause anxiety. So share those joyful experiences with your friends, share those experiences with your spouse, you know, whomever, your other children, but we want, we need to be able to reinforce those positive emotions and we need the reinforcement. So we have to reinforce it. And, but then we want other people to reinforce it for us that it's okay, which is why it's so important to have the right people in your circle. So knowing that your spouse, if you're married, like I said, is not going to walk the exact same path as you. And that is okay. Right. We're different. We handle things differently. Men tend to be able to compartmentalize a little bit better. So all you men out there, you may be able to relate. And it's not a one size fits all, but that's been my experience with the moms that I work with as well as my own life and what I did. So, so I want you to ask yourself, what moments bring genuine joy and happiness regardless of external circumstances? So even though XYZ is going on, what moments can bring you happiness? because we can find them if we really look for them. And then how can we experience them without feeling guilt or hesitation? And that's gonna be by, by sharing it with others, right? And getting that reinforcement. So, and also in what ways can sharing them strengthen your connection with others? Because as you can see in this beautiful, you know, what Elaine has created here, you have, I guarantee you've made connections here. So how can you share these joyful experiences? You By sharing the joy, it doesn't all have to be sadness. We need to share the joy during the time of or that we're going through the hard time. Regardless of the external situation, sharing joy is going to not only help you, but help others. And so that is what's beautiful about this great community. Uniqueness and individuality. Okay, so... I want you to create a list of your personal strengths and qualities. How many of us think about our children's qualities, but never have even considered our own, right? We all have them, but we tend to affirm our children's more so than, than our own. And so I want you to write yours out and then affirm them daily with yourself and just speak life to them, right? We've already, we already know what God says about us. And so speak those, speak that scripture, speak, speak your positive affirmation in regards to like, what are your personal strengths and qualities, right? I always tell my, I have a granddaughter. I always tell her to straighten her crown, right? Straighten your crown, even on the bad, like on the bad days, straighten your crown. And I'm encouraging you to straighten your crown too. So ask yourself what unique strengths and qualities do I possess? And if you're not sure what they are, ask someone closest to you, because I guarantee that they'll be able to tell you a whole list of them. And then ask yourself, in what ways 
can engaging in activities with my strengths enhance my overall well-being? So you can see the common thread here is by doing these things and finding your uniqueness, what's unique about you, right? By doing that, it's going to strengthen your overall well-being as a whole. And it's going to give you more confidence and help you feel alive again in the midst of pain. Next is creating a personal vision. And this really is a commitment because what is it that you want for your own life? What is it that you want for your own life? So again, setting aside that time to figure these things out, identify some short-term goals, some long-term goals, and don't be afraid that, you know, don't think that our faith can, can't increase and strengthen during this time because God will use this pain if you let him. So our faith can increase and it can strengthen during this difficult time. In fact, I know it can because I was able to have peace at times during my estrangement. I would have this supernatural peace that I could not explain. Like it was during like some big catalyst times and I couldn't understand. I couldn't figure out why I had this peace. And then I quickly was reminded it wasn't my peace. <laughs> it wasn't my peace. It was him. It was him. And he could do the same for you. So ask yourself, in what ways do those personal goals align with God's plan for your life? Only you know what your plan is, what he has for you, right? Next is self-care practices. So remember, our bodies keep score. Our muscles keep score, our emotions, and they affect us physically. So it's establishing that self-care routine. Have your quiet time. Have your prayer time. Have that be mindful, be, be like present with what you're doing. Even things such as eating and walking, right? Be mindful, like be present with who you're with and where you are and who you're talking to. So stop worrying about the future and all the unknowns because we could all do that all day long about every aspect of our life, right? Because we don't know what the future is going to bring. Another piece of that is, is sleep. Make sure you're getting sleep. And if it's there, if you're struggling with that, maybe see your doctor or whatnot, or figure out ways to, to make sure you can prioritize that because without sleep, we don't heal. And that is, that's one of the number one self-care pieces that really helped me a lot. So creating that self-care routine that honors your body, not mine or Elaine's, but yours. Because we're all different. We have different restrictions. We have different things. So you figure out what it is for you that's going to work and stick to it. Building a support system. This one is crucial as well because you do need to seek out communities for support like this one here, right? We're not meant to do life alone, especially during these difficult times. Maybe you can even identify some potential mentors or friends who share these similar values. You can probably find that in this community. And initiate some conversation with people who are going to be supportive, people who you like-minded individuals, right? So I would ask you, to, you know, what specific support do you need? And then ask yourself, how can I seek out these like-minded people or groups, right? And then also, who in your circle shares similar values and can serve as a supportive mentor or friend? We all need them. I'm a firm believer, like the mentoring that I did, I, I always have a mentor above me that I look to, and then I love to serve, right, I'll someone alongside me. Because we all need to grow at all times. I like to be right in the middle. So also ask yourself, how can you deepen those connections with others through your faith experiences, your discussions, what you're going through, this difficult time you're going through, but also realizing, like I said, that self-identity is so important. And then I want you to celebrate your progress, right? Use that journal, the progress journal, the activity journal, whatever you want to call it, track your achievements, track your milestones. I would love to hear about them too. And share them with your support group, share them with your trusted friends, this community, and then reflect on them, right? Focusing and putting yourself first, putting your own oxygen mask on first. And then just remind yourself that you can be proud of yourself. 
you're, this is a journey of rediscovery. This isn't perfection. This isn't overnight success. This isn't overnight transformation, right? But share your accomplishments with others because you're not only going to, it's going to help you, but it's going to help them. So lastly, I just want you to remember that you are more than a parent. And I want to leave you with this. Because while I personally know the pain that we endure when our adult kids leave the family, regardless of the reason, just remember that God loves them more than you or I ever could fathom. And that should give you some peace. But I would love to hear moving forward to how you're going to move forward, you know, as your own person and your own self-identity. It doesn't mean you leave other people behind. People think it's so selfish. It's not selfish. It is. It really is self-care and it's actually our responsibility. It's nobody else's responsibility to heal us. So as your own person, not as a mom, not as a dad, not as a wife, husband, right? But as a child of God, because you are worth it. And I just want to thank you so much for having me. God bless. On our next episode of Families Divided TV, Bill Eddy discusses working with lawyers in alienation cases.